Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I've got a very exciting video and that is my birthday book haul. So these are all the books I received for my birthday and I'm just blown away. <laughs> I'm just so, so, so beyond grateful for these. I genuinely, <laughs> I cannot understand how I've got them and why I deserve them and I'm just so thankful to all my friends who got me something. You all mean so much to me. So yeah, we're just gonna get started I suppose. So the first book I've got is The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski and I got this from Kim who you can find over on Twitter and Instagram at Read Starlight and I'll be linking everyone I mentioned down below so please check them out, they're all the loveliest. And I've been wanting to read The Midnight Lie for a very long time. It just seems right up my alley and I really just can't wait to read this. I think for these books I might just read the synopsis because I obviously don't know an awful lot about them so I've not read them so it's difficult to just, you know, give my own synopsis. So I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to read these. Where Nerum lives, crime abounds, a harsh tribunal rules, and society's pleasures are reserved for the high kith. Life in the ward is grim and punishing. People of her low status are forbidden from sampling sweets or wearing colours. You either follow the rules or pay a tith and suffer the consequences. Nirm keeps her head down and a dangerous secret close to her chest. But then she encounters Sid, a rakish traveller from far away who whispers rumours that the high kith possess magic. Sid tempts Nirm to seek that magic for herself, but to do that, Nirm must surrender her old life. She must place her trust in this sly stranger who asks, above all, not to be trusted. So this is sapphic and I've heard so much about Sid and Nirum and there's a quote spot on Twitter that tweets random quotes from the book and they come on my timeline and I just want to read it more. It just sounds incredible and I really can't wait to pick it up. So thank you again to Kim for this. I am very grateful. Next up we've got Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazmian, which Aaron sent to me. You can find Aaron's booktube and blog and such down below and I very much recommend you check her out. She's got lots of sapphic stuff. And this book I really can't wait to read. This is another one. All of these obviously I really want to read, that's why they were on my wish list, but <laughs> this is one I've actually mentioned in my Pride Book Rex video, is one I really wanted to pick up, so I'm very glad. To finally have it. So the synopsis is it's 1989 in New York City and for three teens the world is changing. Riza is an Iranian boy who has just moved to the city with his mother. He's terrified that people will find out he's gay since all he knows of gay life are the media's images of men dying of AIDS. Judy is an aspiring fashion designer who worships her uncle Stephen, a gay man with AIDS who devotes his time to activism as a member of ACT UP. Judy has never imagined finding romance until she falls for Riza and they start dating. Art is Judy's best friend, their school's only out and proud teen, who rebels against his conservative family by documenting the AIDS crisis through his photographs. As Riza and Art grow closer, Riza struggles to find a way out of his deception that won't break Judy's heart and destroy the most meaningful friendship he's ever known. So this... I know people don't like love triangles and such, but I love them! <laughs> And this just sounds right up my alley in terms of the romance, but also the historical setting and the AIDS crisis setting is just very, very interesting to me. And it's a large part of history that I just don't know a lot about. And I'm just very excited to dive in and read it. And also look how bright and pretty it is. And look at the pages I damaged when taking a thumbnail picture. All the books fell. <laughs> So thank you again to Aaron for this. I can't wait to read it. The next book I've got is The Dark Tide by Alicia Jacinka and this is from Ro who's you can also find on booktube, I'll link her down below and I'm so excited for this book as well. This book, oh it could not be more right up my alley. So as its main pairing, this book's got a dark witch queen and just a sunshine heroine and yes! <laughs> That's, oh I love that dynamic so much. I'm so excited to read this. Ah! So, the witch queen comes on wings of night, 
the witch queen has your heart's delight. Hold him, hold him, hold on tight. Hide him, hide him, out of sight. Every year on St Walpurga's Eve, Caldella's witch queen lures a boy back to her palace. An innocent life must be sacrificed on the full moon to keep the island city from sinking. Lena Kirk is convinced her brother is going to be taken this year. To save him, she enlists the help of the mysterious Thomas Lynn, the boy she secretly loves and the only person ever to escape from the palace. They draw the Queen's attention and Thomas is chosen as a sacrifice. Queen Eva cast away her heart when her sister died for the boy she loved. Now, as Queen, she won't take, make the same mistake. With the tide rising and the islanders whispering that Eva's magic is failing, she's willing to sacrifice anyone if it means saving the city. When Lena offers herself in exchange for Thomas's freedom, the two girls will wait the full moon together. But Lena is not at all what Eva expected, and the Queen is nothing like Lena envisioned. Against their wills, they find themselves falling for each other. As water floods Caldella's streets and the dark tide demands its sacrifice, they must choose who to save. Themselves, each other, or the island city relying on them both. So this is a standalone high fantasy, and it's got a bisexual love triangle with a sapphic romance, and I just... Oh, I'm excited to read this. Look at this dark witchy book. I love dark witchy books. So thank you very, very much, Ro, for getting me this. Next up, we've got Soft Girl Girls by Claire Legrand, and this is from Emily, and I'm gonna link her blog down below as well. She's got an awful lot of queer book recs. Definitely someone to check out. So this book is one I've been wanting to read for a while. It's a sapphic horror, which seems to be a thing. We seem to have a lot of sapphic horrors, and I'm not complaining, even slightly. But, oh, this book sounds so good, and I know it's very, very well loved, so I just can't wait to pick it up myself. Who are the soft girl girls? Marion, the new girl, awkward and plain, weighed down by tragedy and hungry for love she's sure she'll never find. Zoe, the pariah, luckless and lonely, hurting but hiding it, aching with grief and dreaming of vanished girls. Val, the queen bee, gorgeous and privileged, a heart made of secrets and a mouthful of lies. Their stories come together on the island of Sockle Rock where gleaming horses graze in rolling pastures and cold waves crash against black cliffs. Orchids whisper the legend of an insidious monster at parties and around campfires. Where girls have been disappearing for decades, stolen away by a ravenous evil no one has dared to fight until now. Yes, so I'm, I want to read some spookier books this time of year, so I think this is definitely going to be on the list. Ah, oh, <laughs> I just... I'm just so grateful for all of these. I just, I don't know how to word that and convey just how very, very, very grateful I am for all of these. So yes, thank you very much to Emily for sending me this. Next up, we've got How to Make a Wish by Ashley Herring Blake. And Izzy was kind enough to send me this and I'll be linking her below. If you like my content, you like Izzy's content. That's all I'm gonna say. Ashley Herring Blake is an author I've been wanting to read for a while. She's got a few quite well-known sapphic books and I just really want to finally read them also. Just before I do the synopsis, I really wasn't expecting this to have a purple spine but I love it. It's such a pretty colour. And the back's so pretty too. Anyway, now that that's over with. If you really want something, the stars won't help you. You have to reach out and take it. Grace has nearly given up on wishes, thanks to a childhood spent with her unpredictable mother, Maggie, who drinks too much and that brutes her lies for every new boyfriend, who just might be the one. Then Grace meets Eva, a girl who believes in dreams, despite her own tragic circumstances. When Eva tells Grace she likes girls, Grace's world opens up and she allows herself to feel truly happy for the first time. Yet just as Grace starts to believe in wishes again, Maggie's impulsiveness forces Grace to choose between her mother and the girl Grace might love between the life she's always known and the future she imagines for herself. That over one unforgettable summer in a tiny seaside town, How to Make a Wish is a story of two girls who find each other at the exact right time. This just sounds very soft. <laughs> and it just sounds like a lovely sapphic contemporary and I just can't wait. And it's very well loved, Izzy yourself loves it and I can't wait to read it and love it too. <laughs> so thank you Izzy for sending me this. Next up we've got Breaking Legacies by Zoe Reed, which Amber was kind enough to send to me. 
Amber and Sasha, who I've mentioned before and I'll mention later on, run a blog together, so I'll link that down below. So this book is, I believe, self-published, and it's not very well known at all, other than Amber, who talks about it an awful lot and fully convinced me to read it. This is sapphic fantasy, but once again, <laughs> we're sensing a theme in the books I've got, and I'm loving that theme. So I'm going to just read the back of the book. In a land impoverished by a war that started before she was born, Kiana has provided for her mother and brother by becoming one of the best hunters in the kingdom. But when a lifelong friend with connections recommends her to the king to track a runaway princess, her life gets turned upside down. Finding the princess is easy, deciding what to do in a conflicting mess of politics and emotions, not so much. Basically, I have heard, I have heard so many good things and I just want to read this so so badly and I can't wait to pick it up and just love it. <laughs> but also it's so heavy, I genuinely it's heavier than a hardback, I don't understand. I must be using different paper or something, it's genuinely heavy. <laughs> but yes, I'm excited. Can't wait. So thank you very much to Amber for getting me this. Next up we've got two books that Finn was lovely enough to send me. Finn is so good. I'll link their stuff down below once again. And you should definitely check them out. So first I'll talk about The Wicker King by Kay Ancrum. This is a book I've been eyeing up for a good while and I'm very excited to finally read but I'm also a bit nervous so I'm kind of scared that I'm gonna to be too dumb for it <laughs> if I'm completely honest but I really want to read it and I also want to read the author's other book The Weight of the Stars. I know that they're both standalones but there's some easter eggs between them and I want to read them in order so I can catch them. This book Sounds like it's going to be an absolute mindfuck, and I'm here for that, <laughs> so. August and Jack have never lived in the same world. August is a misfit with a pyro streak and Jack is a golden boy on the varsity rugby team. But their intense friendship goes way back. It's something they keep for themselves and they rely on each other for survival. When Jack begins to see increasingly vivid hallucinations, August decides to help Jack the only way he knows how, by believing him and believing in the fantasy kingdom that creeps into the edges of the real world. Jack leads August on a quest to fulfil a dark prophecy, and together they alienate everyone around them as they struggle with their sanity, free falling into a surreal fantasy world that feels made for them. In the end, each one must choose his own truth. Written with vivid intensity, The Wicker King explores a relationship fraught with tension, madness and love. It sounds very good, and it's a kind of multimedia. I don't know how much you can see. It's also got different coloured pages and I'm very excited to see the reasoning for that and why and I'm just very intrigued by this. But I'm, I am worried I'm just too dumb for it. <laughs> Next up we've got Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett and I'm very very excited to pick this book up as well. I know it's quite well loved and it just sounds very good and it's something Got more themes I want to read about more and such like that. So this book has a HIV positive main character and as I said with Like a Love Story this is just more about queer history and just more in general that I want to learn about because this is modern day and it's just a kind of story I've never read before and I really really want to. Simone has got high school down. She's made friends, she's directing the school musical, and she's making out with Miles, the most attractive boy in school. She's also HIV positive, and that complicates things. Because the last time she told someone, the fallout was devastating. And when someone finds an anonymous threat in her locker, threatening to turn her world upside down, she begins to wonder if the only way to rise above is to face the haters head on. So a bit of a mystery, a bit of identity. You've got a bi main character in an MF relationship, which we don't see enough of. I'm excited to read that as well and it just sounds very very good. So thank you very much to Finn for these two and I can't wait to read them. And I've got another two books and these are both from Lewis who I will also link down below and I'm very excited about both of these as well. So first up we've got You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I can't wait to read this. I've been really really looking forward to it. So this is a fun sapphic contemporary and it's 
quite well loved. It came out quite recently, but from what I've seen, it's been very, very positive and just such a feel good book. And I cannot wait to pick it up and read it and love it. So from the back, Liz has always believed she's too black, too poor, too awkward to shine. She's planned an escape route from her small town via an uber elite college, but has no money to get there until she's reminded of her school's scholarship for prom king and queen. Liz fears a spotlight, but must face the gauntlet of social media trolls and catacomb competitors. The only thing that makes it halfway bearable is the new girl in school, Mac. She's smart, funny, and just as much of an outsider as Liz, but Mac is also in the running for queen. Will falling for the competition keep Liz from her dreams or make them come true? A smart, hilarious, black girl magic rom-com. So yeah, sapphic rom-com. I'm excited. And I'm also... <laughs> Books like this really make me question America sometimes. Like, do you really get a scholarship for being prom queen? And why is that never mentioned in all those <laughs> films where it's always a catty mean girl trying so hard to be prom queen? Like, they could give them so much depth. But that's why they're doing it. Why don't they do that? Anyway, <laughs> back on track. I'm very excited to pick this up and it's lovely and short so I should hopefully be able to just fly through it and love it. And also from Lewis we've got Radio Silence by Alice Poseman and that actually completes my collection of Alice Poseman books so I'm very excited to actually read them now. <laughs> this book is very 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 well loved. It's Alice's book that I hear people talk about the most. It seems to be just so special to so many people and it's one that I really want to read for myself as well and they just sound so good. What if everything you set yourself up to be was wrong? Frances is a study machine with one goal. Nothing will stand in her way. Not friends, not a guilty secret, not even the person she is on the inside. Then she meets Alan and for the first time she's unafraid to be herself. So when their fragile trust between them is broken, Frances is caught between who she was and who she longs to be. Now she knows that she has to confront her past to confess why Karis disappeared. Frances is going to need every bit of courage she has. Engaging with themes of identity, diversity and the freedom to choose, Radio Silence is a tour de force by the most exciting writer of her generation. I know this has a lot to do with choosing your own path in regards to higher education and, and I know Al Alid from Heartstopper is there. I want to know more about him and he runs a podcast and that's very intriguing. I'm just very excited. I know there's a lot of importance on friendship in this book and that's something I'm also just so excited to read about. I love friendship in books and it's something that isn't prioritised enough in my opinion compared to romance but I love it a lot. <laughs> so thank you very very much Lewis for being kind enough to send me these. I'm so grateful. Next up we've got Ace of Shades and Gilded Wolves and these both came from my best friend Chloe. I don't even know if she watches my videos but hello if you do. These are both series I've been wanting to read and now I guess I'm going to. So first up is Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody. So this series just finished a couple days ago the last book published so I'm very very excited to just dive in. I'm kind of waiting for that because I hate waiting for books to come out and it just sounds so good. Up my alley, all of that. Welcome to the City of Sin, where secrets hide in every shadow. En Sulta was raised as a proper young lady and no lady would willingly visit the New Reigns, the so-called City of Sin. But when her mother goes missing, En must leave her finishing school and her reputation behind to follow her mother's trail. Frightened and alone, her only lead is a name. Levi Glazier. Unfortunately, Levi is not the gentleman she expected. He's a street lord and con man, but could be the only one who can help her. As her search for clues leads them into the clutches of a ruthless society, Ed will need to surrender herself to the city to uncover the truth. Sounds good. And it's Amanda Foody and I know it's queer and I'm very, very excited to read this. The gangs and the dark city and oh, it just sounds so fun. I love that kind of thing. We've also got The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chokshi. This book is a huge size comparison. <laughs> and B, one that I've been really wanting to read for a good while as well and the sequel is out soon. So once again, good timing. Apparently it's just got the most lovely friendships and team dynamics and I love that in a book. 
It's a heist book and it just sounds very fun. From the back, from New York Times bestselling author Roshani Chokshi comes a novel set in Paris during a time of extraordinary change. One that is full of mystery, decadence and dangerous desires. Okay, set in Paris. It's 1889, the city is on the cusp of industry and power and the Exposition Universelle has breathed new life into the streets and dredged up ancient secrets. Here, no one keeps tabs on dark truths better than treasure hunter and wealthy hotelier, Sivran Montagne Alary. When the elite, ever powerful Order of Abel coerces him to help them on a mission, Sivran is offered a treasure that he never imagined his true inheritance. To hunt down the ancient artifact the Order seeks, Sivran calls upon a band of unlikely experts an engineer with a debt to pay, a historian banished from his home, a dancer with a sinister past, and a brother in arms, if not blood. Together, they will join Severan as he explores the dark, glittering heart of Paris. What they find might change the course of history, but only if they can stay alive. So this just sounds incredible. Sorry for my possibly butchered French. I've not spoken French in months. <laughs> I've forgotten how. So I'm a big French nerd, I study French at uni. I love books set in France and with French themes and hopefully I'm gonna start actually reading French French books. But I'm very excited to read this and to actually read more to read a book set during the Exposition Universelle and uh, that just sounds like such a cool time and you can do so much with that in a book and I'm so excited to see what happens in this one. So thank you to my lovely Chloe for sending me these. Love you lots. And finally we've got my collection of books from Sasha who has absolutely spoiled me. What is she thinking? First up, Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha McGann. This is a sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire and this is Sasha's favourite series so after finally encouraging me to read the first book which I was putting off because I didn't want to wait for the third, Sasha's got me the second so she can enable me and I want to read this and then I'm just going to suffer waiting for the third book because I know that there's events in this book. don't know what but I know that they're quite dramatic and they might hurt me a bit so I'm scared but I'm very excited to pick it up can't wait for it to hurt me it's gonna be great and then next up we've got We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor K. Mejia this is a book I've had my eye on for a while it is a sapphic fantasy and I recently discovered that it's a Latina fantasy so yeah much more even more excited about it for that because I want I've been wanting to read more Latine books um whether it's fantasy like this one or modern day or whatever because you know it's part of what I'm studying kind of need to get on that bit so from the back of the book Daniela Vargas is a top student at Medio School for Girls where young women are trained to be perfect wives to distinguish men but her pedigree is a lie she must keep the truth hidden or be sent back to the fringes of society. But when a resistance group learns where she comes from and asks her to become one of their spies, Danny must decide. Will she give up everything she strive for in pursuit of a free medio and a chance at a forbidden love? So, sapphic fantasy. I am very excited to read this. It's a duology, so I'll also have to pick up the second book. I am excited to pick this one up can't wait. And then the third book is Fart of Souls by Laurie M. Lee and it's also got a signed thing. So this is a book that sounds very very interesting as well. So this is the first Nest Fantasy series and it just sounds very fun. It's got what sounds like a very unique magic system and I'm excited to pick it up. I have no family, no home, no talent other than fighting. If I'm not to be the shadow then I am nothing. I am tired of being nothing. After years of training to become the Queen's next royal spy, Saoirse Ashwin's plans are derailed when shamans attack and kill her best friend Sango. Then Saoirse, somehow, restores Sango to life. Unveiled as the first soul guide in living memory, Saoirse is summoned to the domain of the Spider King. For centuries, he has used his influence over the Deadwood, an ancient forest possessed by souls, to enforce the peace between the kingdoms. Now, with the trees growing wild and untamed, only a soul guide can restrain them. As war looms, Saoirse must master her newly awakened abilities before the trees shatter the brittle peace, or worse, claim Sango, the friend she would die for. This sounds 
like a very fun time fantasy i know that sasha and amber have both loved it and it just sounds very fun and very cool and just it's such a pretty cover look at her eyes damn thank you so 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 much sasha for getting me them and i'm just so grateful and i love you okay finally and you might make fun of me for this but we've got <laughs> Avenger sticker plate, which my dad got me as a joke, but told me I had to feature in this, so here we go. <laughs> this is an Avengers themed book with stickers. <laughs> and honestly, I'm enough of a child, I'm gonna find this really fun. But in all seriousness, I am just so, so, so beyond grateful for these books and for my friends who sent me them and just all the lovely people on booktube and on the book community and everyone who wished me happy birthday and just everyone who's just so 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 lovely to me and I'm just so grateful and it all means the world and yeah just thank you very 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 much and also thank you for watching this video I hope it's been fun and I'll see you with another video soon